So we are discussing risk-based engineering and in risk-based engineering the testing or life testing uh, it takes a very important dimension because uh, we are talking about safety assessment predictions that means prior wa warning of incipient failures uh, so uh, so a lot of testing has to be done uh, and third component is uh, life assurance that means if the component or system or services that has been uh, that that has to serve for their their expected life so that's why a priority testing uh, is plays primary role now here there are two major things one is the testing of electronic component electrical component instrumentation they require like we discussed in last uh, three or four lectures uh, life testing of uh, uh, using the acceleration factors and then uh, subjecting the component to uh, accelerated uh, stresses that could be temperature that could be could be humidity it could be uh, operational stresses like voltage um, and uh, current uh, all those things so uh, we have a set procedure for life, life testing of component Uh, for electrical instrumentation uh, uh, and uh, related to controls and all but then when we come to the passive structures uh, especially uh, like mega components uh, pr pressure vessels and uh, you know structures then the testing or the life assurance procedures are little different in fact even for these systems we have discussed about uh, the quality assurance approaches but then when we build the component and then it has to serve for almost like 20 to 30 years or maybe 40 50 60 um, even more so uh, like a pressure vessel if it has to serve for uh, our reactor vessel if it has to serve for more than 60 80 years and all then uh, a good uh, the system should be tested for uh, cyclic loads because uh, these passive structures they are uh, very susceptible to Uh, cyclic loads so cyclic loads means uh, we are talking about the fracture okay so uh, so we have a lot of safety margin and all but then still the probabilistic fracture mechanic or fra fracture mechanics that means the deterministic and probabilistic treatment is required to ensure that uh, their failure is uh, not coming in the way of uh, we can say uh, or rather they can be characterized as component for beyond design basis accident that means the frequency should be less than 10 to minus 6 so with this kind of stringent criteria and we start this uh, co uh, this uh, lecture on probabilistic fracture mechanic um, we know that uh, in passive structure the major failure mode is faulty either it could be thermal faulty or it could be mechanical faulty and 80% of the component in industries like uh, there could be bridges there could uh, could be structures uh, they they are their failure is uh, even though if they are not even if they are not touching the maximum permissible allowed uh, allowed stress uh, the cyclic loading um, has got its own mechanism and the components fail of course there are codes and guides and available and then for pressure vessel especially we have asm section 3 uh, appendix g guide asm codes are there and the uh, reactor pressure vessels are designed according to this code but then the final the criteria is that this type of component should not uh, sh should be sh it should be demonstrated that their failure rate will be in the power minus 6 or less so that their failure can be considered beyond design basis the so this is what the criteria we have here and you can see here a complex uh, sketch of a reactor vessel and the kind of nozzles that it is going to have then the fuel and then the uh, driving mechanism uh, that means shutdown devices they are parked on the top and the penetration for these devices so that they can reach the reactor core this, this is the core wherein the nuclear reaction goes on and then these are the inlet nozzles outlet nozzles so you can see the chances for stress concentration where the sharp corners are there is increases so that means 
the maximum effort in uh, uh, in uh, mechanical components it goes on uh, ensuring the fertile life of the weld so weld takes the center central dimension in the uh, complex structure and they have to be qualified uh, uh, by using a strict criteria of uh, long life number 1 and uh, a failure of tensile minus 6 or uh, per year or less and and probabilistic structure mechanic uh, is the uh, is the uh, technique that shows us the way forward now if we uh, 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 see the background or uh, preliminary introduction for uh, fracture uh, fracture uh, has got three main reason one is the crack initiation then it is second one crack pro uh, crack propagation and then catastrophic failure okay so uh, so at the at the root of it it is cyclic slips which are there then once they accumulate it forms nucleation and then micro cracks develop these are the phenomena systematically has been observed in cracks uh, through experiments and all and then the crack propagation and the fracture that, that means when the crack reaches a size critical it is called the critical size uh, where small a is bigger than uh, more than uh, a critical then the catastrophic failure occur so uh, so this is how uh, simplistically we can look at it but uh, the in academic uh, uh, we have a very good understanding of the crack propagation but the crack initiation initiation uh, signs uh, so, uh, 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 there is uh, no consensus uh, so how to develop the algorithm for crack initiation so what uh, what engineers they do is uh, they assume a, a, a crack it could be of elliptical uh, micro or you know, whatever size and then they work on propagation uh, it is a con conservative approach but it is a safe approach and uh, you know results are always on safer side uh, and then finally uh, go on estimating the critical crack size of the structure the dividing line depends upon the uh, uh, you know uh, between 10 to 10 to 5 we, get the, we have two types of uh, fatty cycle low cycle and fatty cycle depending on the material kind of loading that we have and then uh, this cycle uh, works so and both this, uh, both the low cycle and high cycle fatty they have their own uh, consequences uh, now it has to be seen uh, which is more uh, you know damaging low cycle fatty or high cycle fatty probably there are many dimension physical dimension there are, and then other things that determine this so um, uh, let us see here how the fatty testing is done it is a universal testing machine and the samples are put here and uh, uh, testings are performed for number of cycles as the, that has been determined uh, systematically by parametric studies and uh, then uh, uh, the, we keep the amplitude and then uh, uh, you know stress level um, that assess assessment and then uh, the testing could, uh, could reach up to 10 for 8 cycles uh, for uh, the sample which we are putting in here. Uh, 40 failures are basically associated with degradation of material under uh, cyclic mechanical or thermal or corrosional stresses involving in two distinct phenomena crack initiation and crack propagation that we have seen in the previous slide. Uh, there is no literature exists on, uh, as I mentioned, on the crack, in a crack uh, initiation. And I think that is, there is assumption we make and then crack propagation, finally we work for modeling and all. Then uh, uh, fracture mechanic has that in inherent assumption that, uh, you know, crack initiates and, uh, um, and propagation is, is the detailed modeling. And then there are, there are uh, many probabilistic uh, mechanic uh, te uh, techniques. Um, uh, so there is one thing called uh, one technique called PSN probability, probability stress and number of cycles. PSN uh, curve the approach and then second thing is probabilistic fracture mechanic approach for uh, crack growth and referred as uh, unified approach. And then uh, the surface finish material crack. There are many parameters that govern the um, uh, crack propagation or even initiation um, if the surface finish is not good then there could be uh, some initiation material microstructure uh, crack orientation 
significant uh, plays significant role in crack initiation and crack propagation now um, if, if, when we come further this cyclic loading uh, how it is characterized so how parameters are worked out on this uh, loading so it is basically fluctuating stresses over a period of time so cycles over a period of time and then the uh, various parameters that are associated is mean stress mean amplitude uh, stress range and stress ratio and all we can derive from um, uh, the stress time uh, correlation uh, generally the coarse colony microstructure considered to be having better crack uh, crack growth uh, growth resistance then fine so uh, the, when we talk about uh, different uh, surface finish uh, microstructural uh, uh, you know um, be, um, uh, characteristic then i think the uh, higher grain size uh, works better than the fine grain size and that uh, defines the microstructure in alpha to beta titanium alloys so uh, major causes include material in heat affected zone uh, found to contain initiation initiating site a manufacturing defect escape escape detection so these are the sources of uh, cracks that we are talking about lack of inadequate post weld heat treatment <coughs> especially in stainless steel this phenomena is uh, predominant so uh, all the welds they are subjected to uh, this uh, after the heat treatment uh, for any uh, stress residual stress and all the uh, all those uh, be a characterization uh, this is the reason why we focus on fractural risk assessment in normally weld uh, and uh, parental material in fact not only meld but then the best material also uh, gets affected there so maybe up to 1.8 uh, length um, Uh, factor of 1.8 is taken into account and the uh, in the heat affected zone and the uh, complete characterization is done to assess the faulty behavior uh, in the weld zone it is called not only weld uh, weld segment but weld zone the uh, we have this uh, very very uh, very efficient approach uh, that is called psn approach in psn approach uh, we have the stress reversal that we saw uh, in number of cycles these correlations are plotted and finally what we get is uh, pn curve the probability here and number of cycles here so we get these curves over there for various samples and uh, finally we convert them into psn curve uh, probability stress and number of cycle um, and uh, have the confidence bound uh, 5% and 95% and like this but then what is the approach of for estimating the probability of failure all the samples that were tested um, let us say there were total n number of samples and uh, uh, we had this uh, m is the uh, all the samples are arranged in ascending order and the, uh, n is the maximum uh, that is sample size and then m is the number of uh, its position in the uh, ascending order so if p uh, is equal to m upon n plus 1 n plus 1 degree of freedom is taken here and that's how we estimate the probability uh, a probability graph uh, uh, you know uh, 5% and all that now uh, having this data that is 5% median value and 0.95% then we plot the uh, uh, graph uh, further uh, to get the uh, life estimation um, and uh, and that's how uh, we have um, the the complete characterization uh, in terms of uh, number of cycles and uh, stress and given the prob probability for uh, of uh, bounds uh, for median value and uh, 5% and 95%. Now, if you look at the probabilistic fracture and mechanic approach, uh, this is basically uh, we use uh, the modeling part that is um, Perry's law. Uh, this is a deterministic uh, model. Um, basically, it is having uh, the crack size and number of cycle. They determine the rate of crack growth, and then this is related to the stress intensity 
So we can see here dA by dN, uh, this del K is change in a range of stress intensity, M is a constant and C is a material, uh, these two are material constant. Um, and then uh, for demonstration, let us say how probabilistic fracture mechanic approach works. So uh, before we go, for, uh, go ahead, let us see what are the different steps in uh, assessing the fracture modeling and its uh, fracture life. So uh, define the problem and then determine a deterministic model. Yes, as I said, there is a deterministic model here. And then we convert, bring in the probabilistic element by characterizing each element uh, by assigning them a distribution. We know that uh, all the variables are random in nature. So why not uh, take on face value that they are, they are random and there could be variation which um, will capture at least the aleatory part of the uncertainty. So then probabilistic modeling, the, so uh, failure character criteria is induced, imposed here and then random inputs are given. So in, in short, we assign distribution to uh, each, uh, uh, each of the parameters uh, depending on uh, what kind of variation they, may, they might experience, you know. Uh, decision criteria for uh, simulation. Then, uh, so here for simulation, the Monte Carlo approach is used. Uh, which solve the, which is nothing but a part of nu uh, nuclear simulation, uh, numerical simulation, I am sorry. So this is a numerical simulation is performed here and uh, uh, structural failure probabilities uh, along with uncertainty is uh, uh, performed and input to, this goes to input our, uh, for risk model and risk characterization. So here for demonstration purpose, this geometry plate geometry, thick plate geometry has been considered and the, for the correct initiation component, uh, we have not modeled and we have assumed that a crack having aspect ratio of uh, 2A and 2C uh, is there in the uh, subsurface in the material, uh, material and then uh, we have the stress intensity. For this particular geometry, the stress intensity and given the location of the uh, uh, crack, uh, we have stress intensity is equal, given by this model where uh, ratio of A to C play, uh, plays the role of uh, um, intensity, function of intensity along with the um, uh, sigma value and then this, this model is there. So what it, uh, what it means is that if I have the uh, stress intensity and if I have this uh, I2 is defined because I2 is becoming part of the, um, the stress intensity. So if I define I2 that is elliptical integral on AC on ratio, um, that is the aspect ratio, um, that is uh, ratio of minor to major axis uh, given by I2. Then we can create a systematically table uh, for various ratio, uh, aspect ratio, uh, what will be the I2. And uh, this thing is re readily available here. So, so uh, having done this, uh, for for the, uh, the second part also, uh, that is value of m and c, uh, we have taken a general rule that for the purpose of illustration, value of m is 3.4 and c is 3.5 for austenitic steel because this is standard practice for austenitic steel, uh, stainless steel like stainless steel uh, uh, 304 and uh, the you know, uh, related category. So uh, this uh, thing is also available, M and C value is al also available. Now uh, representation of KIC in mild steel and all, then it is have a different values and all that. that you know. So the set of values which are, which are used uh, in normally uh, in modeling, there those have been uh, ascertained over here. Then the next stage is definition of failure. So definition of failure definitely uh, when the uh, when the uh, when the correct uh, intensity factor that is more than uh, the critical intensity factor, it could be one thing. It could be in the respect of, uh, uh, critical correct length also. But here we have assumed a, a def definition K i is more than or equal to uh, critical intensity factor K i c. Uh, so having given the def definition. Now, uh, 
uh, we uh, we have this uh, numerical simulation so in numerical uh, uh, simulation we are treating all the parameters as probabilistic so let us say if we say the correct size so correct size we have taken viable distribution uh, viable dis distribution has two parameter there is characteristic life and the slope parameter and uh, this is how we define our viable distribution uh, then if we assume lo log normal distribution then uh, uh, the log normal is nothing but when you take log of the uh, parameters in question it will become a log normal uh, normal distribution so um, mu and sigma that is mean and standard deviation the here mu means mu t uh, and sigma because it is a translated value sigma t while while for normal distribution if c is uh, here uh, normal distribution having normal distribution then uh, n mu sigma comes here similarly for m also normal again normal distribution so now what happened we have derived or we have converted a uh, deterministic model into a probabilistic model okay and uh, next stage is numerical simulation uh, we all know that in uh, we have discussed in uh, our probabilistic modeling also for fault tree analysis for each component uh, we assign a distribution and there i think we were talking about uh, log number distribution which is defined in terms of um, median value and then error ratio similarly here also we have de defined the distribution so this is one of the uh, basic characteristic of uh, monte carlo simulation second uh, requirement is in monte carlo uh, simulation the initialization it done in a random manner because we are we are uh, handling a random phenomena so all the characterizations are done in random manner and third thing is if we are expecting a result of, of the order of let's say 10 to the power minus 3 or 10 to the power minus 2 then the uh, number of iteration also will go accordingly so uh, let us say if there are 1000 so minimum 1000 iterations are required to get the uncertainty and median value uh, in the results so so then uh, if if it is transfer minus 3 is the uh, is the is the probability that we are expecting then it should be almost like 10000 iteration that has to that's why monte carlo is called very uh, resource consuming or uh, uh, procedure but then the fact is numerical integ integration is the simplest thing if you go for uh, systematic uh, um, uh, analysis me method the uh, like even if i talk about the normal distribution the model becomes very complex and it is very uh, difficult to handle it so that's why um, uh, for all this phenomena what you need basically is a, an equation uh, you have the uh, uh, para parameters uh, assign the distribution so they have become random variable uh, for follow the algorithm uh, like uh, uh, first we have a function uh, that means our definition of our uh, problem definition of our problem then assign probability generate a set case set number evaluate and this is all very standard about normal distribution and by doing so we develop a uh, cumulative probability of uh, you know in terms of now here uh, on x axis one what we need is a parameter critical intensity or maybe critical crack so it has to be defined so what we have is uh, uh, value of x so we have the reverse function so we have a reverse function that means f, fx uh, is equal to f uh, gx then g is brought over here so that we get an absolute value of x over here and this value uh, comes here and then we have with respect to that value uh, whether it is stress intensity or whether it is a uh, crack size uh, we can see the probability of failure and finally the component uh, when when this has reached uh, it, 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 the probability of failure is one and this is how monte carlo simulation results are obtained now we have seen a very interesting proce procedure uh, for uh, for uh, for mechanical passive components and uh, for their characterization because testing of mechanical uh, component is ruled out uh, they are uh, uh, like for our electronics uh, switches and all we can put in temperature uh, this thing and subject it to various uh, accelerating condition it could be operational stresses uh, it could be uh, environmental stresses or any other phenomena you want to see use for parametric studies so uh, so we have seen and we, we normally for uh, uh, pressure vessel uh, demonstration of uh, minus, uh, one minus six uh, reactor per year so that 
it becomes a case for beyond, beyond design basis case, you know, because it is a single component. Uh, it should not fail actually. Introduction of probabilistic fracture mechanic, we have seen PSN, we have seen various distribution, how they have been assigned. And finally, we have also come to a, uh, uh, come to uh, uh, defining the probably, uh, cumulative probability distribution for our uh, for various crack intensity uh, growth or crack uh, uh, aspect ratio critical crack size. And this is how we have just, uh, we can consider it as an introduction to uh, probabilistic fracture mechanic. But then this is good for get going if you want to do any detailed modeling. Only thing is complexity will, will have to take into account uh, because we have taken a simple plate geometry, we have curvatures, uh, we have uh, taken a uh, stainless steel material, we have taken a that there is no defect inside it. So there are many assumptions. But this is how by idealization we can learn the standard procedure. Thank you.